One of the most fascinating things about the Martian moons is that their existence was predicted randomly in a science fiction satire book and then they were discovered. In Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, he writes that astronomers on the fictional island of Lapusha have discovered two moons of Mars and described precise orbital characteristics all the way back in 1726. Mars's two moons Phobos and Deimos were discovered over a century later in 1877. Their orbital characteristics matched with what was predicted by Swift in his fiction book very closely. We know that there are two moons Phobos which is closer to Mars and goes around in a circular orbit and Deimos which is higher up and also in an almost circular orbit. However, the immediate connection to Mars's two moons is from a different story. It is from the famous Greek book Iliad, where the war god Ares has two sons, Phobos and Deimos, who accompany him into war. Phobos was the personification of fear, while Deimos was the personification of terror and dread. Now, 150 years after the moon was discovered and after many theories about how it came to be, we have finally seen the far side of Deimos for the first time, all thanks to United Arab Emirates' Mars mission. UAE's Mars mission is called formally the Emirates Mars mission or EMM. It's also called the HOPE mission after the name of the orbiter which is currently in orbit around Mars. For the longest time, we did not know what the far side of our own moon looks like. Our moon is tidally locked to our planet which means that its rotation around its axis takes the same time as its orbit around the Earth. So at any point, we see only one phase of the moon. Humans on Earth, in fact anything on Earth, has never seen the far side of the moon. Moons being tidally locked like this is not uncommon. In fact, it is extremely common and all of the solar system's large moons are tidally locked with their planets. A lot of the exoplanets we discover also tend to be tidally locked with their stars. For three and a half billion years, no living being has ever seen what's on the other side of the moon. But the Apollo 8 mission's astronauts who flew a year before the moon landing took place were the first humans to ever see the far side of the moon when they orbited the moon. And finally, in 2019, China managed to place a lander on the far side of the moon, which is currently active there. Both Phobos and Deimos are tidally locked to Mars. Phobos orbits closer to the planet at just about 6,000 kilometers or so from the surface. In fact, no other moon in the solar system orbits this close to its host planet. Spacecraft orbit above this and we have seen plenty of pictures of Phobos. We are so familiar with Phobos, in fact, that we even planned a mission. Russia and China planned a joint program that was to take off in 2011, but it did not succeed. Soviet Union, in fact, had also planned two probes to Phobos in 1988, but they too did not succeed. Deimos, we know far less about. We know that the rock is irregularly shaped and is smaller than Phobos, which is also irregularly shaped. Deimos revolves around Mars much slower than Phobos does, while Phobos is falling towards Mars and will crash into it in another 40 million years or so, Deimos is slowly moving away from Mars. For a long time, scientists thought that because of their irregular shapes, these two moons were actually captured asteroids. But we don't think so anymore. Back calculating their orbits showed that they intersected at some point in the past, which means that they were both born from a common source. This could have been a giant rock that would have impacted Mars or come near it and then broken up into two moons. But there hasn't been much more solid evidence for the moons having been a part of Mars, especially Deimos. That is, until now. Hope Mission's findings put an end to the theory that Deimos could be a captured asteroid. 
On March 10, the HOPE orbiter, which is in a highly elongated orbit, managed to image the far side of Deimos as the moon was orbiting below HOPE. The mission's onboard instruments, which we saw in a previous video, observed the moon. There were three different instruments that did, and in the flat spectrum, it was apparent that the type of material on Deimos's surface is the same as that on Mars's surface. This is quite in contrast with carbon-rich asteroids, and it could potentially indicate that Deimos came from Mars itself which means that Phobos also likely did. Both these moons are tiny. Phobos is just about 22 kilometers wide, while Deimos is just about 12 kilometers wide. They both orbit on Mars's equatorial plane in nearly circular orbits. Phobos rises in the west and sets in the east, while Deimos does the opposite. But we now finally have close-up images and images of the far side of Deimos, so we know that this moon at least was a part of Mars. Now, having found out all of this, we obviously need further studies, both in situ, in orbit around these moons or near these moons, and sample returns of these moons so that we can analyze the material on Earth. It's easy to do sample returns here. It would be similar to doing them on asteroids. On Deimos, for example, the escape velocity is so small that theoretically, a human can just jump high up vertically and escape into space. It is inevitable that we will find out more about these two moons. As we expand our presence in the solar system beyond our own Earth-Moon system, the first object of intense interest is, of course, Mars. And we already know a lot about Mars. It's not going to be long that we would know way more about Mars's two moons than we do about our own Earth's oceans. We already know more about than we do about our Earth's oceans. Meanwhile, the journey of these discoveries unfolding is going to be extremely exciting and intensely competitive and is going to be super interesting to watch over the next few years.